Good evening, Tubers. Matt M. Roy back once again. Back a few minutes early. According to my clock, about three minutes early. But I saw a lot of people were here already. So I said, let's go ahead and we'll just start things a tad early. How is everybody doing this evening? Looks like we got George Blakely, Chet Boulay. Chris Bartlett is here. Uh, Chris Bartlett says, uh, hi, it's a bit late today, later day was 6 30 a.m now 9 30 a.m yeah you gotta remember it's different time zones so if you want to know when i'll be on um generally just go by what youtube says but you can also look up eastern standard time so if i say i'm going to be on at 7 p.m that's eastern standard time and there are conversion charts online that can help you with that eric is here hidden dude said hola hola hidden dude I'm doing great, Matt. That's good, George Blakely. Um, I'm doing okay myself. I uh, have quite a few thrift store finds for you guys today. Um, one really cool find, unfortunately, I won't actually be able to show it to you uh, in person, but I do have a picture of it on my phone. Uh, what do we got here? 12 and a half hours. Yeah, that makes sense because Australia is basically halfway, well, is on the other side of the world from where I am, almost exactly. So about 12 hours sounds about right. Now, I do want to apologize for something off the bat. I told you guys I had a big uh, vlog coming up where Dad and I were doing a project. Well, unfortunately, that didn't pan out. I didn't like the way the video turned out and instead of putting out something bad i just decided to scrap it but what i'll do is i'll in incorporate what we did into another vlog maybe tomorrow's i'll try to do a vlog for you guys and show you but basically what we did is we um put a new side door on the garage the one that was on there before the bottom was totally rotted the old frame was rotted so the door was basically just hanging off the hinges literally the bottom hinge was almost completely gone so i'll show you guys and gals that uh probably tomorrow yeah probably do a vlog tomorrow don't hold me to that but i promise it'll be soon 10 10 watchers awesome are we at seven o'clock yet uh almost John Mosley, good to see a live stream again. Well, I thank you. I'm trying to do as many as possible. I'm not going to promise one every single day, but I will try to do as many as I can. Um, maybe every other day. I think that's doable. Um, but got to remember, these take a lot out of me. Now, the nice thing about a live stream is there isn't a lot of prep work involved. Like, I don't have to plan a lot of this out. A lot of this is just spitball, and I know you guys enjoy that. But at the same time, by this time at night, I've gotten all my exercise in. I'm tired. So we'll just have to see how that goes. That's all right, Eric. No problem. I'll see you in a bit. Oh, excuse me. A lot of uh, heartburn. Oh, by the way, I've started taking these again. For those of you out there that uh, suffer from uh, sleepless nights or have problems getting to sleep, uh, this is some of the best stuff that I've ever found. These are Restore's Restful Sleep Melatonin Drops. I'll go ahead and show you guys the package. Um, I got these at Dollar Tree a while back, and I bought a whole bunch of them because it was one of those limited time buys. Um, this is uh, five milligrams of melatonin, so I take two of them, and this helps you go to sleep, but it does it naturally, unlike something like... Um, uh, Benadryl or diphenhydramine, which is a chemical that basically makes you drowsy chemically. This does not. This is a natural, um, uh, what do they call it? It's, an, it's really a natural uh, enzyme that your body produces, but because of the lifestyle that we lead now and the foods that we eat, we don't get enough of it naturally from our body. So this is a great option. These can get on the expensive side. So I would recommend looking online for these, something like Amazon, before you um, before you go out to your local store. Like your local pharmacy is probably going to want quite a few dollars for these. And no, they're not paying me to say this. I just really like this product a lot. 
Chris Barlow, I got a doctor's appointment in two hours. Well, this isn't going to be two hours long, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, I think somebody just came in. Baxi? Baxter, you to say hi? Come on. Come on, bud. I'm going to try to get him to come say hi. Come on, Baxi. Come here, bud. Come here. Come on. Say hi, Bax. Say hi, BB. Everybody want to say hi to Baxter? You go, kitty. <laughs> He's been looking for my attention lately. Yes, you have. You know, Mom and I are gone a lot during the day. I'm at thrift stores with her or we're bike riding, so they don't get a lot of attention. Look at those black back legs. Yeah. You don't go, kitty. It's okay. What? What? What is it? Good cat, you know you are. You know you're a good boy, Bags. Yeah. Everybody's saying hi to you, George and Chris. Everybody's saying hi to Baxty. You are handsome, but doesn't like to be held when it, when I'm sitting down for some reason. He does kind of want to get down, but you can kind. I'll tell you a little secret with cats. You can squeeze the back of their necks a little bit and that calms them down good boy good boy good kitty good, good kitty and now he's purring we got to be kind of quiet though all right good guy i'm gonna have to put you down because we're gonna be uh doing some uh Garage sale hauls in just a minute. Yeah. Oh, Chris wants me to scratch his stomach. Like this. <laughs> He's not crazy about it. Only very seldom will he like me to do that. You ready to get down? Okay. I'm going to put him down before he scratches me. Okay, so we got 14 watches. I'm going to wait a few more minutes before I uh, start doing the um, thrift store hauls, charity shop hauls, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> My cat's having fun with the plastic bag. Check this out. You see that, folks? Cats and plastic bags. I'm telling you, that is the best toy. You want to be careful because they can get their heads caught in the handles. So if you're going to leave them alone with a plastic bag, little top tip, just break the handle first. Good kitty. Good boy. Good boy, bats. All right. So let's go ahead and get to a few of these thrift store hauls. Um, I'll start with the most interesting I think you guys will find. I picked this up at the CHKD, was it? Yeah, the CHKD on, I think this was the one on um, Battlefield Boulevard in the other part of Chesapeake. Got a couple of Alvin dolls. These are from one of the movies, I'm thinking. Um, it could have, These actually may have been from the original Alvin the Chipmunks movie from uh, 2007, but I got two of them. They're both the same. Got them for 98 cents a piece. Uh, they're both in really decent shape. One of them, and I don't remember which one, had like a green pen mark on it. Let me see if I can find it. Huh. Must have cleaned itself off. Oh, no. There it is. See, it's right by his head. See that little mark right there? Might be able to get that off with a little bit of um, Clorox cleaner, but I want to make sure that it doesn't bleach the uh, tan out of the fur. So I might try just a little bit of soap and water, see if maybe that was like a um, water, what do they call it, a uh, water-soluble marker or something like that. But for $0.99 cents a piece, I thought they were kind of cute. Uh, next... Uh, from another CHKD, yeah, from another CHKD, picked up some random webcam. I like getting webcams because I can pair them with the computers that I refurbish and get a few more dollars for them. There's some random generic brand. It doesn't even have a brand name on it that I can see. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at this. 
It's actually a Microsoft Live Cam VX3000. I have never seen a Microsoft Cam that didn't have a big old Microsoft logo right in front of it. So that's kind of interesting. Hey, if it works, it works, right? And I gave 58 cents for this. You don't believe me? There you go, right there. 50, <laughs> come on, 58 cents. There we go. And I have Baxter that wants to help all, <laughs> all of a sudden. Uh, next, again, nothing too special here. Got a couple of keyboards. Uh, good old Dell from probably the mid to early 2000s, like an E, like a, like a Dimension E510 era or an XPS 400 era keyboard. I actually do like these because they are pretty solidly built. Um, this one's pretty dirty, as you can kind of see there, but it'll clean up nicely. Interesting fact, do you know that you can actually put keyboards in the dishwasher? Now, once you do it, you have to let them sit for about two weeks before you can use them, but you can actually clean your keyboards in the dishwasher. Next, uh, another more modern Dell keyboard. Um, these I'm not as crazy about because even if you, if you look right here, you can see they're using cheaper paint, and you can see it's kind of worn off. The, um, the more used keys like the space bar, the enter key, and a few other ones. But um, I gave three bucks for that. And again, repairing with a refurbished computer, they'll work just fine. And then we got a random Dell mouse. Uh, nothing too super special, though. I do like this particular generation. Milo? No. Because it has the back buttons. You see the little buttons on the side here? So basically when you're scrolling through internet web pages, you can just click that to go back. It's actually a feature that I use quite a bit on my uh, log with my Logitech G7 wireless gaming mouse that I use on this computer. Let's see. Eric Brunheimer, I have a tub that I will soak them in for a while with dish soap, then spray them with a hose to get the soap out. Interesting. I never tried that method. I, I always did the dishwasher method because it was cheap, easy. And the only drawback is you have to let it sit for a while. But I mean, other than that, it actually works pretty good. But I may have to think about using the tub. So basically, you have a tub. And you just put dish soap and water in it and you soak it. Pretty much the same principle, except doing it in the dishwasher, you're not soaking it for a, a long period of time. I would be concerned about the membranes, uh, the membranes um, decaying, especially on the more modern keyboards. They use really, really cheap membranes, like plastic membranes on there. And um, if they decay, then the keys won't have any travel. I mean, you might be able to push them down and they'll still make contact with the, um, the copper contact on the board, but it won't have any travel anymore. Let them dry my way too. Yeah, I can imagine. But yeah, but you always want to make sure that you dry them fully because if you don't and you plug them in a computer, then you can short something out. I'm going to keep an eye on Milo. He's being a really bad cat tonight. Um, next. Okay, Th this is kind of cool. This may warrant a video in and of itself in the future, but I'll go ahead and pick it up. It is really heavy, so I, I don't know how long I'll be able to hold it for. Let me try this. This is something that I found at a thrift store that I don't usually frequent. Um, it's kind of out of the way, so I don't get down there a lot, but I am certainly glad that I did today. Uh, this is, believe it or not, a VCR, but it's much more than that. This is a JVC model, uh, where is it? HRS5000U. Now, I haven't even had a chance to look this up yet, but I can already tell you this is a very high-end VCR, probably dating from the mid to late 80s, just judging by the look, the aesthetic, and the features that it has. Um, over here, you see it's got a little door that opens up, and in here you have your uh, volume. <laughs> very interesting. You actually have ports here for a uh, headphone microphone and then a separate knob here to adjust the volume. 
Then again, you open this up. You guys already saw it there, but let me, I got to figure out how to do this. But if you look down here, <laughs> I can't, I'm going to have to do it like this. Sorry, guys. But if you look down here, you can see it has this fold down uh, door. And basically, this has all of your functionality buttons play, forward, re rewind, pause, um, record. This has the audio dub. So basically, if you're making a recording, um, you can actually have different audio and video together. You can dub in uh, separate audio. And then you got, of course, all your different uh, controls here. What is that? Uh, it's hard to read this backwards. Edit controls. So this actually has some editing capabilities. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this back up because I'm having a real hard time, again, holding this. But this is probably going to warrant its own uh, video in the future. I did plug it in and tried at the thrift store. It does function. Um, as to the fact how long it'll work. It probably is going to need belts because of the age of it. It does work now, but generally VCRs that are this old, the belts are starting to turn to that kind of rubbery goo that everybody kind of cringes at. Um, but for now it actually does work. So I might actually incorporate this into my setup back there. Um, and the very interesting part of this and probably the most unique, and you see very few VCRs like this, the reason they called an SVHS VCR is it does indeed have SVHS plugs, and you can see them right there for Super VHS. Um, I don't think I'll be able to use that particular feature on that TV because it's the newer LCD or high-def TVs don't actually have uh, S-Video, but it's very interesting that this VCR does have this. One thing I would maybe consider doing is buying a vintage CRT uh, TV just to incorporate this particular VCR, oh, which I am going to put down before I break my back. <laughs> and at the same thrift store, I do realize this is not from the same era. It still may work. Um, they have a bin like most thrift stores do with old remotes, and I just picked up this JVC uh, shuttle plus MBR uh, universal remote. Well, universal meaning it'll control the TV, VCR, and cable box of, of any JVC brand. So we'll see if that works with the uh, VCR. If it doesn't, I actually have other remotes that are more um, era appropriate to that VCR. Nick Roberts says, my old v video player has some cool video effects you could do, like uh, make the video look like a painting or cartoon. <laughs> yeah, I remember those. When I was in um, middle school, my teacher had one of those early video cameras that actually ran off of one of the top loader VCRs, and his had that type of, uh, type of special effects. It was actually really cool. Chris Barlow goes, I take them apart and use alcohol to clean them. Yeah, but when you use the alcohol, you want to make sure you use not, at least 91% isopropyl alcohol. Basically, that means there's only about 8 maybe 9% water. You want as little water as possible because water can actually make the uh, components rust, specifically the heads and even more than that, the pinch rollers and the uh, cap stands. The, I was going to say the cap stands. They're very susceptible to rusting over time. But that being said, uh, with this one, I still think it's probably going to need to have belts. And I know for a fact you can get a belt kit on eBay for this really cheap. I mean, we're talking probably 5 to $10. And believe it or not, we are almost done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, something I picked up. Again, this is not something that I can physically show you because it is a bicycle and I can't really bring that in my room. Um, I picked this up at uh, one of the CHKDs. I think it was the one on uh, Kempsville. It was the one on Kempsville Road. And I bought this for $28. Now, I will have to bring this bike to our local scat bike shop because the um, 
the gear cable, uh, the shifter cable is broken. It actually was working fine until I drove it around and then it snapped. But I knew that there was a problem because uh, before that I could tell it wasn't going into all the gears. Um, but if you take a look at it, this is a Cannondale. Um, I'm not even sure of the model. It doesn't, let me see if I could turn this off. You guys can see it better. It's a Cannondale bike. And it's a pretty high-end one, too, actually. Uh, dates from about 2010. These bikes, brand new, were about $1,000. Um, and you can see that it is the aluminum frame. It's a hybrid, <laughs> hybrid bike because it actually has the... Uh, the frame that's man, male and female is what I meant to say. Basically, it's not your typical male or female bike. It's kind of a, in the middle, if you will. Um, but again, I'll probably do another video about this once I get it up and running. The only thing that I know I have to do is get that um, shift cable put on it, and then it should be good to go. I'm sorry if I'm not talking that well tonight, tubers. I am very, very tired. So I don't know how long we're going to do this, but we'll press on for a little while longer. Classic Mobile Home is here. Uh, Chris Barlow said it's only 70%. Yeah, try to get at least 91%. At least that's what is in the States now. In Australia, it could be something different. Maybe they use 89 or 92%. But uh, what we use here is 91%. It's called isopropyl alcohol. Chris goes, nice bike. Thank you. I, uh, I'm becoming kind of a bike hoarder, and it's not necessarily a good thing because I am filling our shed up with all these bikes that I can't possibly ride all the time. So and I have to kind of cut back as, as time progresses. Do you remember the auto bike? They came out sometime around 2000. Doesn't ring a bell. Um, I if it's like one of those uh, bikes with the uh, the engines on them, then no. I really uh, I really just prefer a typical bike myself, and I never had any money back then anyway, so I wouldn't have probably been able to afford it. <laughs> Hired gun. You can all you you can get ninety nine percent ice probable at elect electronic supply stores. Yes, you can. And ideally that would actually be the best of all. But when you're using that, you need to make sure you do not get that on your skin because 99% alcohol will burn your skin. And I learned that the hard way when I was young and took the electronics class. Um, I was playing around with it. And I say playing around because we were being stupid and we got a little bit, I actually, I got a little bit on my, uh, on my little wrist area actually it was more like the top of my hand and it burned almost instantly. As a matter of fact, I think if you look closely on there, you probably can't see it now, but I still actually have a scar. See that redness right there. Yeah. Automatic shifting mechanism. No, I don't. It does. It doesn't actually ring a bell. Unfortunately. I got 13 people here. Nice. Um, I do have one more thrift store find for you guys this evening. However, it's going to be very hard to take it out of the bag. So I'll just go ahead and tilt the camera down as best as possible. Um, it's just a Logitech speaker system. Got this for $7. Uh, you can see Logitech right there. And then it's got it's got these which have decent sound. Um, they're not the greatest. You have one little maybe two inch tweeter there, and then the subwoofer is in the actual um, box here itself. And then you just have a little control pad here which gives you uh, volume control. Got uh, power on and off right there, and then a place to plug headphones. And I actually think that was a nice touch. Uh, being able to plug in headphones. And that is going to be it for the garage, the garage sale, you know, the thrift store hall portion of this particular live stream. Danny K just joined in. Well, if you're looking for the, um, 
of the thrift store hauls, you're going to have to wait and just rewatch it later because we just finished with that portion. And actually, tubers, I'm going to have to end it here because I am absolutely exhausted. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to try to do more of these as I get more items in to show you guys. Uh, I'll go ahead and answer this one from Eric. I saw one of those bikes at a thrift store and considered buying it until I remembered the 21 stitches in my leg from when the one my parents got me failed back then. <laughs> Just take it easy on a bike. If you're trying to learn to ride a bike again, do it slowly, do it safely, wear pants, maybe knee pads, and always wear your helmet. All right, tubers, I'm done. Catch you guys next time. And as always, have a blessed evening, everybody.